The future is in fuel cells, and we've got to move there. How are we going to do it? Yeah. The future is platinum. Uh, the reason for that is because with all the movement into green, platinum is very much part of it. And over 80% of it is right here in, in South Africa. So the crisis, yes, it is there, but the focus is on developing fuel cells which have a much higher loading of about uh, f four times the, the loading, if not more, of what you got to get in auto catalysts. So in, in platinum, it's all about developing the, the market for fuel cells, which are already engaging the authorities in, in, in Limpopo, so that how can we convert into a, 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 a platinum valley, if I can put it that way, so that we can grow a fuel cells. Because the other beauty of fuel cells is uh, that uh, it cannot be interchanged with, with any other commodity. So it's, it's inelastic as well. So the future is definitely there in fuel cells. We already have a, a company in the, in the USA which we have invested in as, as in the development fund. The intention is to grow it, uh, lower the cost price, and then move the production uh, elements to South Africa, just as we have done with auto catalysts, which are uh, significantly manuf manufactured in significant volumes in South Africa. And what can the benefit be for South Africa as a whole, do you think, if we move firmly yeah. as a nation yes. into fuel cells? The drive is jobs, 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 uh, and opportunities and a contribution to the, to the, to the GDP. Because uh, we should see this crisis as an opportunity that uh, how can we leverage all the issues to make sure that we emerge stronger when when we come out of it and uh, fuel cells is certainly one one of, of of the rules but the others is to make sure that we find other uses for for platinum for example in terms of uh, crucibles for led lighting they're using platinum in there so and there's a huge a opportunity for, for it to use, be it platinum or ruthenium, but it's still part of the PG, PGM family. It seems that the platinum business has very high overheads. It's an industry which has uh, come from times of, of, of plenty. So it, the conversation I have with my colleagues is it has a rich child syndrome, that the costs end up being higher because people say we can afford it. But uh, this is an opportunity to, let's say, what can we reduce the overheads to what is sustainable because it's also good for the operations because before we cut a single job in the operations we should not be having excess effect in the structure the focus before we we look at the operations the focus should be make sure that we are lean mean and fit we are having a, a brutal focus on our cost structure to make sure that it's reduced to the bare minimum but which is which is sustainable can we expect a lot of retrenchments in this industry as a company, we employ 58,000 people. As we right-size our operations, will be solution-focused and sensitive to the multi-needs of stakeholders. Even if we, we get to lower numbers of people, it will be done in as humane manner as possible. What happened at, at, at Marikana is a classic example of it because uh, the, the, the mine was put on care and maintenance and 1,800 employees impacted, but out of those, only 42 uh, without a job. The rest are employed. What is happening to the whole black economic empowerment effort as a result of this crisis in Platinum? Yes. There is certainly a need for more consolidation amongst the juniors and the mid-tier. It's all about uh, market development, looking at better uh, opportunities for the metal, increasing the demand of it, and diversifying the geographies in, in which it is used. There was over-reliance on Europe. Maybe, just maybe, we need to focus more on the rest of the world to make sure that when one part of the world is having economic difficulty, there is no uh, disproportionate impact on the industry.